convert a larger number, like 50, from decimal to binary, we're going to do the same thing, just a whole lot of division. So 50 divided by 2 is 25 remainder 0. 25 divided by 2 is 12 remainder 1. 12 divided by 2 is 6 remainder 0. 6 divided by 2 is 3 remainder 0. 3 divided by 2 is 1 remainder 1. And 1 divided by 2 is 0 remainder 1. So the number 50 in decimal is equal to 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 in binary. Now we can do the same thing for octal, except we'll be dividing by 8 instead. So 50 divided by 8 will give me 6. 6 times 8 is 48, and that will leave a remainder of 2. 6 divided by 8 is 0, remainder 6. So 50 is 62 in octal. For hexadecimal, same thing. Start with 50, divide by 16. So 50 divided by 16 should give me 3, because 16 is 2 times larger than 8, and 8 times 6 gave me 48. So I expect 3 times 16 will also give me 48. And that will leave me with a remainder of 2. And then I have 3 divided by 16 gives me 0, remainder 3. So this is 32 in hexadecimal. And if I look up in my number line, that is what I see. So if I go with an even larger number, like 10,000, and I want to convert this to binary, I'm going to do a whole lot of division by 2. So 10,000 divided by 2 should give me 5,000 remainder 0. 5,000 divided by 2 should give me 2,500, remainder 0. 2,500 divided by 2, give me 1,250, still remainder 0. 1,250 divided by 2, give me 625, remainder 0. Now 625 divided by 2 will give me 3, 12, remainder 1. 3, 12 divided by 2 will give me 156, remainder 0. 156 divided by 2 will give me 78, remainder 0. 78 divided by 2 will give me 39, remainder 0. 39 divided by 2 gives me 19, remainder 1. 19 divided by 2 gives me 9, remainder 1. 9 divided by 2 gives me 4, remainder 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2, remainder 0. 1, re remainder 0, and 0, remainder 1. So I'll start from the bottom, and I'll say that the number 10,000 in base 10 is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. One 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 zero zero one in binary. 
And if I look over the number line, that is what I see. So if I do this example again for octo, I'll have less division to do, but it'll be a little more complicated. So I'll have 10,000 in base 10, and I'm going to divide it by my base, which is 8. So 10,000 divided by 8, me 1,250, the remainder of 0. Now 1,250 divided by 8, 0, I'll have 1, so that will leave me with 45. 5 times 8 will give me 40, leaving me with 50. I'll have 6 times 8 is 48, so I'll have a remainder of 2. Now I have 156 divided by 8, so I will get 1 and 76. That will leave me with 19. So I'll have 19, and I'll have a remainder of 4. So 19 divided by 8 will give me 2, remainder 3, and then I'll have 0, remainder 2. So my octal number is 23, 4, 20. And that is what I see in my number line. So I can do this again for hexadecimal as well. I'll start with the 10,000 in base 10, and I'm going to do a lot of division by 16. So if you're not quite so familiar with multiples of 16, you're probably going to end up doing a lot of multiplication on the side as well. For this first one, I will get 625, the remainder of 0. So now I need to know how many times 16 goes into 625. Well, the 16 will go into 62 three times, because 3 times 16 is 48. So that will leave me with 14 left over. I would pull down the 5, have 145. So 160 minus 16 will give me 144, which is slightly less than the 145 that I have. So I will put in a 9, and I'll have a remainder of 1. So now I've got 39 divided by 16. Well, that will give me 2. That will give me 32, and a remainder of 7. And then 2 divided by 16 will give me 0, remainder 2. So my hexadecimal number will be 2710. And if I look over at my number line, that is what I see there as well. 